The next topic that I want to address with you is going to be a lot of fun, building a page layout. Everybody always enjoys this because up until this point, we really haven't had a page layout. We just have a bunch of paragraphs and headings sort of sitting on our page, but there's no structure to any of it. There's no columns or headers or footers or any of that stuff. So that's what I want to show you how to do. Now, once again, very briefly, as a quick side note, as you can see, what I've done is I've taken these four divs, these four colored blocks that we were working with in the previous exercises, and I've pulled them all the way back to where we started. So once again, just a real quick look at my code, and this is what I have. I've pulled everything back to the defaults, because what I want to do here in this first exercise is review with you the concept of floating. And we've seen floating a couple of times. What we want to do now, though, is we want to use floats to actually build a page layout. And this is a very contemporary, very modern way for building a CSS-based page layout. Back in the day, earlier, we used to use absolute positioning. So I'd come along and I'd figure out all of the X and Y coordinates, if you will, for all of my main layout components, like my header and my main body and my footer and menus and sidebars and all the rest of it. And I'd come along and create a set of divs that all used absolute positioning, and then they all had top values and they all had left values, you know, something like that. That worked for a while, but it's really kind of not used in modern web development. Everything is done in floats these days. So that's exactly what I want to show you. Okay, so let's review floating. First of all, we know that we can take an object like a div or an image or any other HTML element, and we can float it either to the extreme left or to the extreme right. So I can come along into my yellow div, for instance, and I can say float, full colon space, left just like that. And that's going to float the object. It's going to push the object all the way over to the extreme left hand side of the screen. And the other thing that happens as well, if I refresh here, is it pulls the object, our yellow div here, out of the normal flow. We talked a lot about document flow, that stream of content. It pulls the object out of the normal flow of content. And any objects that appear beneath the floated object simply wrap around, right? Well, in our case here, because we have a column of boxes, what actually happens is they get tucked up underneath. For instance, did you notice that my blue box, my blue div disappeared? He's actually hidden underneath my yellow div. He's there, we just can't see him. So let me do this. I'm going to go back to my code. And then rather than floating this guy on the left, I'll float him on the right save and then refresh. And there's my blue div. He was there all along. He was just tucked up underneath the yellow div. That's how that works. The only other thing that I want to mention is that when you're messing around with divs and your different elements, make sure you set at least a width property. So here we're using 200 pixels. So you have to set a width property unless you're floating images. Okay, so watch out for that. So there's kind of a quick down and dirty brief review of working with floating. Now what I want to do, though, is I want to start experimenting with floating a little bit. And I want to show you what happens when we have floats appearing on multiple objects. Let's go and check it out. 